The survival rates for brain cancer vary depending on the type of tumor. Most malignant brain tumors in adults are glioblastomas, which are highly aggressive. Treatment includes surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. But the median survival is about 14 months, and two-year survival is only 30 percent. Since cancer often hides itself from the body's defense system, the strategy here is to manipulate immune cells to recognize and attack brain tumors. It isn't often that we hear paradigm change when speaking about cancer research, but with advancements such as DNA sequencing becoming faster and cheaper, researchers are saying the rules of engagement have changed. And that means the rules in defeating the big C are also changing at a rapid and welcome pace. Welcome back to Midpoint, the Newsmax Deputy Health Editor, co-author of the Da Vinci Baby Boomer Survival Guide. Nick Tate joins us here in the studio. Always a pleasure to see you, my friend. Good to be here. This is fascinating here yep. because now we're talking about licensed drugs. I think that's the key word that you want to hit on. Right. Now targeting the immune system, and that may help the body fight cancer. That's it's something I think that scientists have always wanted to do. Well, for decades, this has been the holy grail of medicine, is to figure out how to get the immune system to fight cancer. Right now, cancer is treated through surgery, by cutting out tumors, radiation, by burning them away, or chemo, which poisons them. But this new approach uses the body's own immune defenses to fight cancer. And the good news here is that some of these new drugs have already been licensed by the FDA. So we know they're safe. We know they're effective, effective at treating certain kinds of cancer. And now some of the research is showing that the drugs that have been used for skin cancer also work against lung cancer. This new brain cancer study, they're using a, a virus that's introduced into the brain and that brings the immune system to those, those brain cells, those tumor cells, and kills them. And so I think what we're really talking about is a brand new era of cancer treatment that we're going to see in the next two to five years. I, I'm trying not to downplay this, but this almost sounds a little bit like medical desperation where they're going, we have to find something. Okay, let's try this one here and this one here, and maybe this one will work here. And it would astound me that this was never thought of before in the past. You would think they would try everything right from the first the first moment. Well, it's been a part of science fiction for a long time, the idea that you could do this. Uh, but the, the science, the science fact has been harder. So what we're really seeing, I think, is the fruits of the genetic research that's been happening for a couple decades. We're getting to the point that it's no longer theory, but they can actually find that this drug works in this case. What we're, we also heard this week that the NCI is unveiling a new program that looks at genetic mutations in cancer cancer patients that might be treated with a drug for different kinds of cancers. So within three to five years, we may see a breast cancer patient treated with the same drug that's used to, pre to treat a prostate cancer patient because the gene mutations in both of those cancers are the same, the underlying genetic mutations, even though the cancers themselves are different. That, again, comes down to a very, and, and again, I, I'm not a doctor, I just play one on TV, but it sounds almost like narrow thinking at the beginning, very narrow thinking. This right. drug must go here and this drug must go here. Mm -hmm. I'm just astounded that they wouldn't have done this well before and just tried anything because when it comes to cancer, I don't know about the doctors, but I would try anything and everything. Well, and in fact, that is what they're doing now. Why they didn't do it before, I can't, yeah. I can't tell you. But uh, this new gene mapping program that the NCA is launching is going to pull in about 3,000 patients who will be have their DNA sequenced. And they're thinking in the next couple of years, they'll be able to tell. They'll spread those drugs out in, to a wider net to see what else they can catch. And what you're talking about here, let's go into the whole gene therapy issue here that shows some promise against brain cancer, mm -hmm. and this is something called ADV-DK therapy. What is right. that? Well, they take a herpes virus and they change the DNA, they re-engineer it, and they inject this herpes, herpes virus into the brain cells, the tumor cells in brain cancer patients, and what it does is then it attracts the immune system which targets those tumors without damaging healthy tissues in the brain. The other thing they can do is they can introduce a drug that kind of goes after those DNA tags in those tumors. So, you know, the the goal here is to, is to treat with a very sort of surgical strike. Only the tumors leave the brain cells that are healthy alive. Uh, radiation, of course, causes brain damage. Uh, in addition to killing the tumors, it can take away your memory, some whole brain radiation therapy. So this approach is a completely different thing that goes specifically after the tumor. Aren't we almost talking here about smart medicine in some ways or, or smart drugs? That's really a good way to put it, absolutely. It is an absolute game changer and it's a very strategic strike. You know, surgery, 
Radiation and chemo are these kind of broad spectrum, you know, the, the comparison that I would make is it's like taking a shotgun and shoot to shoot a very small, what, let's say a fly, when if you can take a more surgical strike and just take out the fly and not everything else around it, you're doing a better job. Those, those older techniques, conventional uh, cancer treatment, surgery, radiation, and chemo are really the opposite of what you're describing as smart medicine. 30 seconds left. We yeah. have licensed drugs involved here. So is right. it fair to say that this is going into use soon? Absolutely. Now? The beauty of some of these drugs is that they've already been approved, so they've passed those safety and those effectiveness tests, and now it's a question of just trying them off-label for other things. I think we're really talking about two to three years before they're saying some of these drugs could replace chemo in as little as five years. Let's not use the cure word. Not a cure, just it's, yet. Tr it's treatment. But we're basically shrinking, bringing them down, controlling them. That's right. What kills you with cancer is when it spreads. So if you can control it and keep it from growing and spreading, you can live with it. That's the goal. Fascinating news. Remind everybody once again about the Da Vinci Baby Boomer Guide. It is out there. Make sure you get one. Now let's teach people how to survive on cancer as well. Great <laughs> job. Thanks a lot. Buddy. Thank you. Coming up next, the day America stopped in its collective tracks, all because of a babe. That's next, right here on Midpoint.